What up, peeps? Welcome, fam. What's revving my nutrition? I don't know. <laughs> what is revving your nutrition, Randy? Popeyes mostly these days. You heard it from him, folks. Popeyes is where it's at. Hi, Eileen. I'm so glad that you joined, and I love the comment that you shared under our announcement for this. Mm. You have another IFBB pro in the house who's experienced the same thing that we are all, have all experienced. Oh, here we go, guys, with the comments. Oh, geez. What's up, Mary? Okay. If you're new to our Rev Instagram Live, hi, Eileen. I'm Michelle. Randy. We are the owners of Revolutionized Nutrition, and um, if you're new... Please um, don't let any of the comments in the comment section possibly offend you. <laughs> What's up, Dawn? Are you swimming right now? Are you feeling good? Dawn's getting ready. She's in her peak week. She's ready to go for her show this week. Oh, my goodness. Mary, we miss you. <laughs> yeah, you guys are in the disclaimer, Josh. Yeah, so our Whippet triplets have a disclaimer. Please know and take offense to the comments that they put in the comment section. I try my best to ignore them because my attention deficit disorder... Um, struggles with that. So, All right, glad you're Don. ready, Don. All right, so everybody's joining us here tonight because we have something in common. And you wouldn't expect it. We have the same it. shirt. We have the same shirt. And you wouldn't expect it from somebody like myself or even somebody like you. But that. She's quitting weightlifting to go to CrossFit forever. No, that's not what's happening. Uh, and that <laughs> is gym induced anxiety. Uh, or in gym intimidation, if you will. And brief little history on me. If you are familiar with me or know me in life, um, you know that I'm a professional athlete with the International Federation of Bodybuilding. So you would think somebody like myself doesn't experience gym anxiety or has my whole life, I always knew what to do in the gym. That is not the case. I too had my first day in the gym and I was scared shitless. And I, too, experience gym anxiety when I go to new facilities and new gyms. It's new people. It's new equipment. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm and trying, I'm trying to come up with, like, a word for it, like, fit anxiety, gym anxiety. Gym intimidation. <laughs> gym intimidation. Yeah, that's me, too. <laughs> Planet Fitness might use that. And, in fact, I work out at a Planet yeah. Fitness because you know why? I feel safe there. And there's nothing wrong with that. And... <laughs> You know, I kind of, I put out some feelers the other day. I did a couple of polls on um, my personal Instagram and our revolutionized Instagram asking people who else experiences gym-induced anxiety. We often talk about the gym being a therapeutic outlet for many people. Yes. However, for most people, it is a source of anxiety for a plethora of different a, a, a reasons. A cornucopia, even. A cornucopia of reasons. And we're going to dive into that. Um, I asked you guys specifically, what gives you anxiety about the gym. Why do you shy away from the gym? Why do you avoid it? I normally just don't want to make other people feel bad with how good shape I'm in. And you're amazing. So I'm looking out for them. Right. I think that's really, really thoughtful of you, Randy. Thank you. I'm kind like that. Be kind. <laughs> so he's doing this for you. He's avoiding the gym for, for you. you. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we also um, asked, you know, I have suggest suggestion, suggestions and tips that have worked for my myself and other people. And I also, I also asked you guys, what suggestions and tips do you guys have that have perhaps helped you over overcome gym anxiety or helps you at least cope with it to this day because for many it doesn't just go away some days we feel like we're like a badass we got our music blast and other days we might feel a little bit more yeah. shy and you know people with injuries they may you know y'all used me for example but a neck injury i have uh, some nerve damage on my left side so you give me a back day hey i'm there all day but if i got to do chest i'm a little more intimidated because you know i'm not able to do what i used to do mm -hmm. so a lot of times people coming back from injuries or not at their prime there's a lot of different reasons for this anxiety, and it's not just, I'm in the corner and don't want people to look at me. Right, right. And I see in the comments, Brianne, she goes, that's why I go to OTF. Yeah. And that's actually one of the things. We had a few people say, I go to a specific gym where they tell me what to do and how to yeah, do it. OTF got a lot of love in the comments. OTF got a lot of love in the comments. We're going to give a few gym shout outs, actually, yeah. through, this, uh, through this process of gyms that have been very warm, inviting, welcoming, and providing structure for their members. Um, seeing you do Bulgarian split squats, 75s for reps gives me gym anxiety. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They looked like 75s, but they were 35s. So I hope that helps the process a little bit. I it should have been 75. I did not do Bulgarian split squats at 75 pounds today. Now, I just want to remind you, you guys. Your, you haven't been eating your Wheaties, I guess. No, I've been giving all my Wheaties to the chinchillas. Oh, that's true. Okay. 
I want to let you guys know that I don't have my shit together entirely in the gym. Every day I'm working on possibly new movement patterns, perfecting movement patterns, trying to get stronger. I'm so fucking involved with myself. I don't care what everybody else is doing. And Mary has a good point and there too. And I go to Robert Wood Johnson because it is more health and wellness. No offense, but there's no meatballs there. <laughs> yeah. yeah and, and Center State was that kind Center of Center State. There's the, different. All the health and wellness facilities. Yeah. Bill actually um, made a good comment. He or said there's wellness, different levels of gyms and different um, They're communities. They, they cater to different members. Right. So like fitness and uh, health and wellness centers, Planet Fitness, you know, that's a good place to start with a very diverse clientele that might not be yeah. so intimidating. And, and, and as well, learn. Hey, Ray, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but, uh, you know, learn the times that are best for you in the day as well. Yeah. So let's, let's actually dive into that. I'm going to first, let's talk about, and you guys feel free at any point to drop in the comments, a reason why you feel gym intimidation or things that have helped you overcome it. Um, I go to their sister gym in Bergen County. Yes. Awesome. King's strength and performance in Cranford is great. Awesome. awesome. I love these suggestions. As you guys know, we do this live, uh, but we do post and share this on our wall. So people who can watch this tomorrow or on later dates can actually hear these Us. suggestions that you're offering, which is fantastic. So here are the top reasons why people have feel intimidation or anxiety with the gym and let's let, let me know and, if and you can relate it usually comes down to the little giants using altoids <laughs> intimidation <laughs> <laughs> sorry i hope anybody if anybody got a little giants reference that was your chance to... obox and morganville and powerhouse great. too and powerhouse great great feedback with obox and morganville Stu, the owner very very clean wonderful very nice guy um when i first started out Having a plan of what I was doing was really yes. helpful. Exactly. So let's dive into that. So the top reasons why. One, other people are looking at me, especially during hip thrusts. I got a lot of people saying I feel uncomfortable doing hip thrusts yeah, in the gym. I mean, I, I, I understand. I'm just, <laughs> same thing happens to me. <laughs> but I also am just doing it in the middle of the gym as I'm walking, just humping around like a dog. <laughs> It is. I am humping a barbell in front of everybody. You know, Make no about, eye contact. You know when the dogs do their hump walk? Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I do for Does it look like what I just did? Exactly like that. <laughs> if I give a piece of advice, if you really want to step your game up, go to a gym that has people who are better at this than you so you're motivated. So that's another swing on it. That's a good... For some people, that's a source of motivation. For others, it's a source of anxiety. And I'm glad that you put that perspective on it. That's yeah, a beautiful perspective. Because that that's the issue. Because that's almost the reverse of this. Sometimes people go to a gym, let's call it Planet Fitness, and they don't have that same intensity. Yeah. Yep. And I, that's another... I'm, I'm going to go in all of this. Chat Sorry. Yeah. iron culture. This, this is going to be a fun one, I think. This is a good one. So the ne for next one. I don't want to annoy people who do know what they're doing. And I'm just going to leave a thing on this. I've been in the... I've been in the fitness industry. No almost, one knows what they're doing. Yeah, I think I've been working professionally in the fitness industry almost twenty years now, mm -hmm. and in my and before that, I was a bodybuilding fanatic. Um, so I'd say I knew what I was doing in the gym since like eighteen, nineteen. Let's mm -hmm. say, not once did somebody who came up to me for advice ever annoy me. Right. It was nothing but flattering. I was happy and grateful to help them, no matter who they were. Mm -hmm. The people that tend to give you shit are people who are assholes and don't know what they're doing anyway, and they're just overcoming their own bullshit. Egos. Egos. Egos due to insecurities. Yeah, everyone was once a beginner. Everyone and, was once a and beginner. And not for nothing. Yes. Makes you feel a little a little good when someone thinks you know what you're doing. Mm. <laughs> I like being asked. Exactly. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, the next one, I'm in, uh, straight up, I'm intimidated. I don't want to work out alone. The next one, since I've gained weight, I'm not confident. We saw a lot of this post-COVID, a lot. People were very intimidated to go back into the gym after they may have gained 10, 15, 30 pounds. Um, sexual assaults uh, yeah, survivors. And, and I thought that was a really, you know, we, I, you know, I do so much interesting stuff looking at, you know, feminism, sexism mm -hmm. problems and this stuff. And it's, it's still a big thing. You know, people don't realize what triggers other people mm -hmm. may not trigger you and a situation you see as no big deal no big deal that might be the trigger for them to give them the PS, PS, ptsd and that just as a reminder a gentle reminder that you do not know what somebody else is going through they may look super confident uh, on the outside but they might be yeah, and paul actually has else. a fantastic comment on there going back to the gym advice if they come up to you and tell you what to do they may be an a-hole oh yeah that's a whole unsolicited story. advice another animal happened, uh, happened to me the other day some 
much older gentleman came up to me and he goes, you should change the height of that, th- th- something that I was doing. And I was just looked at him, I was like, thank you. And he left because yeah. the suggestion he gave me was actually incorrect. But I was and yeah, politely, well, I'm gonna save. I'm gonna you. save it for that. I have so much to go on everything we well, say. Yeah, here. yeah, I know. Um, I'm e- this is a big one. I'm mm. easily overwhelmed because I don't know how to use the equipment, and that right. one I very much relate to because every gym I have ever gone to has different yeah. equipment and the, different pulley systems. Yeah, and so the cool thing about this, you know, again, being in the gym industry a long time. 20 years ago, you had to go find someone to help you. Mm-hmm. Now you have it on your phone, and YouTube and Google are actually fantastic resources for this. And we're going to dive into that, yeah. too. This is an interesting one. I'm a natural athlete, and I feel small and envious of the big guys in the gym. Yeah, and now this, my old joke with bodybuilding is once you start bodybuilding, you're forever small. And, that, <laughs> and, the meaning yeah, and, you, and you could be years into your growth. You could be growing and be so much further in your progress than you were three years ago, but you will still feel forever small. Yeah, because you're just overanalyzing everything. Um, and I'm going to guess that, but short story, sh- long story short, they're not paying attention. Exactly. <laughs> uh, the next one, creepy old men. That's me. And advice, it goes by... Hey. Yeah. <laughs> and that goes vice versa as well. There are creepy older women. There definitely are. As well. <laughs> there definitely are. Uh. <laughs> Um, this was an interesting one. Wearing a mask at a mask optional gym. Which I wasn't a, really going to go that route, but, but it'll bring it it's up. It's, it's a newer issue, and mm-hmm. you know, for New York people, the vaccine mandates are another issue too. Correct. Um, and then I, I like this one, and <laughs> I can relate to this one. I feel like they can hear me breathing heavy, and I get embarrassed. Well, well, that's me going up the stairs. That is me all the time. <laughs> if you have been following, and I, I make gags on myself, uh, if you've been following my. Um, workout videos the faces that i make are hilarious and um they just happen it is what it is so you just kind of have to say and Josh, fuck i else agree i agree with your statement <laughs> can't repeat it but okay. i agree <laughs> so now let's dive into suggestions from clients who overcame it so these aren't even my suggestions yeah. these are suggestions so, from other people yeah so the sentences that are being read are from the people i'll probably give my uh Advice from the peanut gallery as we... Yeah, the peanut gallery. (laughs) So the first one. This person started on the cardio equipment and slowly they made their way into the weights. They started with machines first, so it offered stability when they worked out and then made their way over to the free weights. Yeah, and I have some good advice on this as well. You know, going back to the center state days, most gyms will have like a stretching and ab area, a weight area, machine area, different things. I actually found when I was a personal trainer over the years and I was working with a client who was embarrassed... We would go to the ab area and just use the bands. Mm-hmm. You can get some pretty strong work back there. You take a couple dumbbells over there. And there's generally not the same crowd in the stretching area mm-hmm. that'll be by the dumbbell rack. Correct. And, it, uh, you know, you can always sneak into a yoga studio. Yeah, if they have that, if they have the space available, you can find little secret spaces. But, but I agree with that. So some people like to bash on different sorts of styles of training and stuff. And you know, as long as it's not going to hurt you, so be it. So but be it. as long as it gets you the process started... That's what it's about. Nice. It gets you feel uncomfortable. I love that. Right? Very right. That's what I do. Very right. I'm used to it. The <laughs> next uh, advice was from another member. Direction, and for him, a good CrossFit coach. So he started in CrossFit, and now he utilizes the gym for other things yeah. besides CrossFit. And it helped him find the foundation of movements. So he learned how to squat. He learned how to deadlift. Yeah, and that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he says CrossFit coaches, but you, you don't even need to say CrossFit. Coaches and mentors in general. A good coach. A good coach. Now, this could be, <laughs> this isn't the easiest thing to do. I'm not going to lie. I had a whole conversation with somebody regarding um, this yesterday. Because as new as you are, and Relentless is a wonderful. Rel- Shout out to Relentless. Me and Matt Strout go way back. Um, we used to work at Central State together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, you know, having a good coach is, is important. And it's kind of hard to tell who's a good coach early on. So, you know, ask the gym members, ask the other trainers, ask the manager, mm-hmm. ask around. If someone starts giving you advice and you're listening, like, hey, do they know what the hell they're talking about? Right. Um, I am always so freaking happy to double check anything you guys send me. Yes. So if a trainer gives you advice, a nutritionist. Email it to us. Please. I, I'm, I'm so happy to. There's so many times I check it out. Um, and actually, I had a story the other day. One of our clients is actually working with, uh, remember Jody? Of course, yes. And she reached out to me also. Shafazra, yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, it's just so cool. We have so many relationships. So most of the time, I actually be like, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Not other. Oh, no, we have an awesome relationship with a lot of the professionals in this field. Uh, we love them. But, yeah, that direction and coaching is awesome. Um, another good tip is find someone who you respect or maybe you who you look up to the industry and ask them what resources you should look into to study for yourself. Because mm-hmm. um, yeah. it's always very dangerous. 
I'm sorry if you guys don't do this. I'm calling you out, but very dangerous to listen to a coach with no context. Yes. Like, you shouldn't be doing things because Randy said so. You should be doing them because, oh, that sounds like a good idea, and I'll check it out, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. What's up, Sharice? Um, and that goes back to YouTube, finding good yeah. well, YouTube and, content. And that's it. I'm happy to help you guys with that, too, because there is so much good stuff out there, but equally just as much bad I'm going to tell you guys right now, full transparency, I go on YouTube while I'm at the gym Plenty of times while I'm there to double check my form. I was doing Bulgarian split squats today. It's not a movement that I do often at all. And I did double check my form on it. I watched a tutorial and I made sure that my knee was where it needed to be, where my distance between my feet were where it needed to be for what I was trying to execute, the muscle I was trying to engage. So I do it too. I'll be in the gym. I look at my phone and I might be looking at a YouTube tutorial. Yeah. And and one of the neat, neat thing on that too is... um, I got no shame in saying that. You know, there's a lot of real people you can listen to mm-hmm. you know you can go listen to some sh- uh, strength and conditioning coaches from mm-hmm. like the nfl olympic weight training yep. uh, i'm sure all the personal training resources have stuff you know nasm ace all that kind of stuff um so when you're looking for things look for something that has credentials attached to it it's yep. a good place to start good advice um for this person um they felt more comfortable after they lost a little bit of weight via nutrition with revolutionize and then they went into the gym. So that was the method that worked for this person. They wanted to lose some weight with their nutrition coaches first and then go into the gym. Uh, that person also went at a different time than when the fit bodybuilders were there. Fit bodybuilders. Uh, or they went to a gym that catered more to the, let's use this term loosely, the average person. If you guys kind of pick up what I'm putting down. Um this other member got over asking people for a spot. They asked a person for a spot uh, once, and they built confidence to ask can again. I go back to the other one? Yeah. Hmm? Sorry, yeah. So I wanted to add with that, uh, a good way to find that, you know, how do you know what a good time is? Mm-hmm. Talk to the manager. Tell them your concerns. Sure. Um, you know, I can say most gyms that... I've done that so many times. What's your busy times? Yeah, that 8 to 11 a.m. at any gym that offers classes, that's going to be a time. If you don't want to be around people, there's going to be people. Right. Same thing with 4 to 7 p.m., uh, your best options are, well, not during the summer because the college kids are all right. off, but usually 12 to 3 is awesome, uh, late night, 8 to close, mm-hmm. or early morning, 5 to 7. Nice. Those are usually going to be your times. Uh, and Sunday afternoons, the gym is dead. Yeah. So if you have a gym that's best open like to go. 1 or 2 on a Sunday, yeah. yeah. But Sunday and Saturday mornings, opposite. Yes. <laughs> uh, so the person, uh, they asked for a spot. Asked for a spot once. The person was more than happy to help them out. And then they built confidence and always, and then realized that everybody was willing to help for a spot. So don't be afraid to ask for a spot or even ask somebody to show them, hey, how'd you do that exercise? People are happy to help in the gym. Everybody's happy in the gym. Yeah. And most gyms, especially, you know, most- Friday and Saturday nights too. Yeah. That's the real bar. That's where we go to the bar on Um, Friday night. Most of the bigger gyms will have trainers doing floor hours too, where their job is to help the members. Yeah. There might be some hawks trying to sell you too. But I remember when I was walking floor, they can, they can be very boring. You ask me for help, it gives me something to do. Yes. <laughs> um, a welcoming atmosphere, and there's, here's a shout out to another gym. A welcoming atmosphere like the trainers at CKO. Uh, us and, we're very friendly with the employees of CKO and the owner of CKO. I can't give them enough love. Um, another awesome atmosphere. Uh, this advice was wearing clothing that made them feel comfortable. And I'm just going to yeah. throw this out to me. Wearing clothing that makes you feel comfortable. Many times when I do leg day, I simply wrap a um, hoodie around my waist because I sometimes don't want people staring at my ass when I'm bending over. Um, Simple things like that can actually help you. (laughs) Those are silly things. And especially if you're using free weights too, you can always have your back to the wall. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, That's true. That's true. And for trainers out there, be cognizant of this with your clients. <laughs> yes, please do. Uh, somebody mentioned this before, a written workout plan. To have structured, this is exactly what I'm going to do. And even if you need little pictures drawn next to it, um, do so. If you have a chance to meet with a trainer at a gym for like a free session or it's your first day, show me around, show me how, how to use this piece of equipment. Take video yeah. of them performing the exercise so you have content to look back on when it's your turn to go work out. And as well, Pay you know, the, you're paying for the trainer. For the free session, you're paying with your membership. So when you get that initial consult and they want to kick your ass today, that's great, fine. Tell them, I'd really rather if you could teach me some of the basics so I can do it by myself. Right. Yeah. The next one, this is my all-time favorite. 
blasting mu music and focusing on my workout, no one else. When my music is on, I cannot hear anybody else. I have complete tunnel vision. When my music is out of my ears, um, I get a, I actually feel a little bit more uncomfortable. So try to make your own little world, get your good music on. It also is a way to keep people to come, to keep them from talking to you if you choose not to talk to people. Yeah, so <laughs> headphones with no music on could do that. <laughs> um, this person did research. I felt like I didn't know what I was doing, so I went online to look up basic machines and how to use them. Lots of YouTube, like what I said before. Uh, then I would try and get the to the gym on the off times with less people until I realized most people are only doing things half right, true, and 98% don't care what I'm doing anyway. Everybody... I liked how Kelly, I was talking to Kelly Johnson, our favorite uh, therapist. One of our favorite. One of our favorite therapists that we work with. And uh, she said, human beings are egocentric by nature. Yes, we are. We think everybody's looking at us and it's us and us and we're us. The, we're, me, the, me, we're the protagonist of our own story. <laughs> we're the protagonist of our own story. No one cares about you. And one of the funniest quotes that was ever told well, to I'll me. We're all going to die anyway. When I, when I first started getting into this was... You're not that important. No one's staring at you. And I was like, I'm not that important. You're correct. And it <laughs> truly changed everything to me. People are like, wow, that's me. No, it's it's true. People are so in their own zone. They're so into, am I doing it right? Is my form go good? How do I look in the mirror? What's my clothing look like? They're so involved in their own shit that they are not looking at you. So we're all in the same headspace. Um, what's this one? Huh. At first I was uncomfortable and nervous about doing things wrong, but after a while I said, fuck it. That's good advice. Uh, <laughs> you already said that one. So, yeah. So here's some, um, let's see if any of these are repeats though. Like I was saying, more people are more impressed, uh, that you're even working on yourself. So if anybody is paying attention to you, it's usually an admiration. Um, otherwise they don't give a shit. Uh, we talked about wearing headphones. So this is another thing is avoiding people. Sometimes you want to avoid people. Sometimes you do not want to talk to people. Sometimes there's a creepy guy at the gym you don't want to talk to. Head or a creepy girl. <laughs> yeah, she really is. <laughs> <laughs> um, put your headphones on. I like Matt's answer um, there. <laughs> and avoid eye contact. So if there's somebody that you do not want any association with at the gym, it is normal in nature for most people when you make eye contact with somebody to kind of default to a awkward smile how you doing and this can invite <laughs> somebody into conversation how you doing and uh best thing to do no eye contact keep your headphones in avoid <laughs> if, that's the this. wear a flannel in the gym to establish dominance Harrison, best, <laughs> best answer tonight <laughs> Just go the old Phil, old Phil Heath style. Yeah, buddy. Wear a flannel in the gym to establish dominance. Everyone will think you're tough and no one will have the audacity to approach the you. The trick is you do that with your jeans and work boots and the flannel and just go grab the hundreds and knock them out. Nobody will talk to you ever again. Now I do, now I do everything wrong with pride. Yeah. <laughs> And then that comment made my night. Yeah, Harrison, I think my next video I will be wearing a cutoff it's flannel. It's funny. I, for I, I actually think, what's that comment? The L <laughs> L.A., uh, L.A., what are they? Young L.A.? Wah. Uh, they, they, they actually just brought out a, a, a cut-off uh, flannel. Harrison, I think we need matching cut-offs. <laughs> yeah, we need the red flannel shirts for Rev. I'm in. Shit, man, you're right. You know what? Maybe, actually. Rev flannel shirts for the fall? Yeah, fuck yeah. Ah, we came up with an idea together. Good job, guys. That was teamwork right there. High five. High five. I like. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. <laughs> Um, keep in mind, most of our form isn't perfect and we're all working on our technique and pursuing better, better movement patterns. Again, most people are focused on themselves. Yeah. We're trying to figure out the equipment. And I'm going to, I'm going to circle back to that one too. Um, take a beat and circle back when you're, there's a difference between perfect form, not getting hurt form and Ooh, that looks dangerous form. Facts. You're not going to be able to probably max out with perfect form. It'll be good form. Yes. But it should never be. That I'm going to get hurt for. <laughs> yes, that's true. And just remember, no one's perfect. Like I said, everybody's trying to work on their own shit. Yeah, everyone's okay. got injuries or things that go different, so. Cor yeah. Oh, it, also, sorry about that. Yeah. If you're ever in a situation and you feel like giving unsolicited advice, you know, maybe you're worried someone's doing something wrong, the first thing you say to them is, mm. hey, what are you doing there? What are you trying, what's the, what, what move are you trying to do? Because they may be doing a move you had no idea what, and they were doing it right, and you look an asshole. <laughs> 
you're an asshole. So you go, hey, what are you trying to do? True. All right. I like it. Yeah. Hmm. That's old advice. Now. For me. I'm old. I love you so much. Lies. The next one. When we go back to creepy people, in, in all seriousness, if there is somebody that makes you feel uncomfortable... So, and they do not. There's some people that do not take social cues, like I was discussing. Yeah, there really before. are a lot. There, there's people. It just yeah. social cues aren't a thing for them. Every gym usually has the guy. Yeah. First of all, practice your resting bitch face. Your RBF cue that you're uninterested. If they do not take the cue, you talk to management. You tell management there is a big chance that somebody else has also made a complaint on this person if they're really creeping you out. Um, I used to work at work at a gym, and there were. Two people in, partic in particular there that made several people feel uncomfortable. And when several people complain about the same person, something's going to be done. So there's a strong chance you're not alone in that. Perhaps another wow. complaint has been done. Take it up with management. Reese has a great point coming here. Reese, okay. One of my pet peeves in the gym. Guys who come to girls and ask them if they're almost done with the equipment when there's another guy using the same one. Why not ask that guy? Like as in they're trying to... Well, they're either hitting on you or, yeah. or they feel like you're the easier target to get rid of and oh. try to intimidate you off the machine. Oh, gosh. Sharissa, I haven't experienced that one. That's a good one. I've seen that before. I, I've seen that. It's Tell them to piss off. I, I've definitely seen that. Um, especially when it's, and this tends to usually be douchebags, not to be a dick, <laughs> but douchebags, either very... To bogs. Uh, some bodybuilders who refuse to do their exercise out of order. Or just weird middle-aged dudes who are dicks. Yeah. Paul says, Sharice, dude, he's just into you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's a, that's a rough one. Just look at them stern and be like, nah. Except, no, Sharice, just make sure you take Harrison's advice. Wear a flannel cutoff shirt and uh, that's your dominance. Dominance stance. Or you can pee on the machine. <laughs> like a dog. And then it's yours. <laughs> My spot. That's what I do. That's my spot. Yeah. <laughs> um, some people get a gym partner or a trainer. Now, this can be cross-prohibited or you may not be able to always depend on a gym partner, but if you have the ability to do so, go for it. Um, my sister is not a gym person. She's intimidated by the gym. She, she hates it. She worked with a trainer one time to uh, learn all the equipment, videotape it, write it down, whatever, and she's going to do another session with him in a month so only one training session per month to kind of reassess everything, make sure she's doing it right and learn some new things. So that's another option yeah. too. And as well, if money is a factor, but you really would like guidance, I, this is where those, you know, the smaller boutique clubs really shine, whether it's OTF, it's true. Um, a CKO, the small CrossFit studio sets, yeah. um, where you get a, it's small group training or group training, a small group, but that's where you kind of. If you want the advice without the personal trainer price tag, that's the move. That's good. Matt says you could level up and wear a flannel onesie. Oh. <laughs> I'd be like a baby. Get the, where you have a little clip on the bottom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God, we're coming up with so many good ideas tonight, guys. Yeah. I love our brains. <laughs> uh, next, the next one, like I was just saying before, practice perspective. Everyone at the gym at some point was just like you. You're entitled to be a novice or a beginner. Ask staff to teach you how to use equipment, like Randy was saying before. We all start somewhere yeah and i love this quote because my favorite thing to say is it's no crime to be ignorant it's a crime to stay ignorant mm. so not knowing it's no fault of your own but once you're given the tools and resources to learn then it's on you i'd like that one thank you sharice sure, is looking for a flannel onesie shit i gotta get on this now i gotta talk to your mom do you make flannel onesies i'm we'll, sure she does we'll make them. um this is an interesting one and and um <laughs> I can attest to this big time. As many of you know, I have a Crush very... Crush Xanax into your workout, your BCAAs pre-workout, and drink it during remember your workout. I, remember I had to take a Xanax after taking too much pre-workout the whole yes. time? Yes. Uh, funny story. Don't crush your Xanax. Funny your story. Drinks. Years ago, before we were working with the pollen, I got one of those like samples of pre-workout, and I didn't realize that the sample of pre-workout that I got was actually two servings. <laughs> yeah, I remember that, actually. Now, <laughs> I have a very low tolerance to any stimulant. I can only do like a quarter of a scoop. So now you're having this quarter of a scoop... Lassie here, taking two whole scoops of a pre-workout. Sat in the car, my face went beet red, ears went beet red, heart started racing. I walked into the gym like, can I do this? No, I had a full-blown panic attack. Had to leave and take a Xanax. <laughs> Proceeded to go back into the gym and train like, oh. <laughs> uh, that was terrible. Never do that. 
Uh, do <laughs> no, don't do it. But this is interesting. Um, like I said, I do have a very low tolerance to caffeine. For some, now we do, uh, many of us take pre-workouts. For some, you may need to reduce your caffeine intake because caffeine will yeah. exacerbate your anxiety. anxiety. Yeah, especially if it's anxiety and mm -hmm. not and not more like the I'm nervous about being looked at and that anxiety might jack up. More like you almost feel like, oh my God, I feel almost paralyzed at the gym. Like yeah. you pull up to the parking lot and go home yep. kind of stuff. That's, I think, what this is more pertaining to. Mm -hmm. And I would try knocking it back. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. And if you have that anxiousness, yes, pull it down a little bit. It will intensify that anxious feeling that you're having. So that's something to yeah. keep in mind for some people. Like Gosh, myself. she actually did one rep the whole, per hour that day. Why do I have this picture of Michelle benching in slow motion after popping a Xanax? One rep per hour. <laughs> I pretty much, I pretty much, I would do a set and I would just sit there like, oh, and then I would come back into it again. That's pretty yeah. much how it went. Um, now, just so you know, they do, like Apollo Nutrition does make um, pre-workouts non-stim, like hooligan bare knuckle. More and more companies are creating a non-stim pre-workout because they know um, two things. People's tolerance is increasing to caffeine, and also it does cause anxiety in a lot of people, especially as these pre-workouts are getting yeah. stronger or stronger. Or if you're a night workout person who's a little sensitive and it's messing your sleep up. <laughs> your caffeine gonna, is going to 100% affect your sleep and therefore your recovery. So these are things to keep in mind. Michelle has that 60 30. <laughs> yes, <60, laughs> exactly. Michelle has that 60 30, 60 tempo. 60 seconds, 60 minutes on the eccentric. <laughs> Michelle is like the cartoon. It's like, slot it's, like, it's like the speed of a sunflower turning to the sun, <laughs> where you have to put it in the fast, the time lapse to see it go. Yeah. <laughs> If you time lapsed me, I'd almost be in Normal. real time. Uh, and I want to give a shout out to gyms that can come off very intimidating, but are not truly. Um, a pollen gym. Yeah, so if anyone was with us at the group workout there saw it. Yeah, a pollen gym in Edison. As you guys know, we work with a pollen nutrition. We work with a pollen gym. The owner Rob Semborski is one of the most incredible human beings I have ever met. And he's got stories. And yeah. his I love staff, Rob. yeah, and his staff, they and his family, the most kind group of people and real and real and this is you know apollo nutrition one of the 10 ranked hardcore gyms in the world and you most people would be like fuck that i'm not going there like it was rugged iron you walk in there and they do truly treat everybody like family and their clientele is very diverse yes you will have a power lifter over there and a bodybuilder over there a but boxer then, over there and a boxer over there <laughs> but then you're gonna have a, a gentleman who's 95 years old walking on the treadmill you're gonna have just a a, a, a mom of five that just like wants to do a little bit of a little bit of workout and nothing too crazy. It's very very diverse. You have eighteen year olds and you have ninety five year olds. Truly an awesome group over there. That's right, Sharice. Yeah, Rob introduced us. Wouldn't you? Yeah. Oh, that's right, Sharice. Yes, we wouldn't know each other if it wasn't for Rob. They are truly wonderful. As Gary says, love that place. Um, we're going to be planning on doing another group workout at a pollen gym in Edison soon. Okay. So when we announce that, if you're curious about the gym or the facility, join us and for a workout. Athletes, there's an idea I'm floating around too of possibly doing a once a month thing where I'll be around one day a, one day a month to, to train. Go to train with you guys more be a group training session where i'm really going around fixing form helping out so if that's not an interest you definitely let us know yeah for sure because i'm gonna do it anyway but for sure um and you know i just want to top it off that most people i i think this story with uh melissa is actually one of the funniest one of our clients melissa um when she first met me she told me a story that she was so intimidated by me when she first met me, only to find out that I am like the friendliest human oh, ever. An awesome Paul, yeah, thank you. Yes, uh, so I want you guys to know that sometimes people who look intimidating because maybe they're you know they're fit or they're muscular <laughs> or they look like they know what they're doing or they're in the zone, whatever it is, they are the friendliest people. They would love for you to ask them questions. They would love to teach you. They want to see other people get healthy and stronger and feel good. Like I always say, I want people to feel just as good as I feel when I'm in the gym. And I am more than happy, just like other people who are in the same boat as I am. We are here to help you guys because we had a day one also. Yeah. And if we can help you with your day one, that is beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I'll use myself. I think I fell in love with bodybuilding because and weight training and all that stuff in general. Because early on, I had some really great people introduce me to sport, mm -hmm. whether it was my high school coaches in the weight room really helping me out, teaching me the basics of the big compound lifts. Yes. Then moving to my first gym 
and meeting up with a bodybuilder there who said, if I came in at five in the morning, she'd train me for free. I came in five in the morning and she trained me for free and mm. gave us a great learning experience. So there's people willing to help you if you look for it and are open for it. Yep. That's the thing. But don't be a douche either. <laughs> no one's going to help you if you're a dick. <laughs> That's it. You got to look for it. You know, um, it, it does exist. And yes, when I'm working out, sometimes I look uh, off-putting because my headphones are in. It's just because my tunnel vision is so oh. insane that I'm not very aware of my surroundings. So if you see me in the gym and you want to say hi, smack me on the back of the head because I'll be like, oh, hi. Yeah, and on that point too. So if you know someone at the gym who you want to speak to and you know they're kind of a person that gets a lot of attention at the gym, so whether it's a pro, a f- influencer or whatever, my best move is if you have a real question for them, pop, their in, pop, pop over to them during a workout break, say, hey, I know you're busy right now, but I'd love to ask you a few questions after if I can, or would I be able to DM you? Yeah, this is the number one thing I do is because I'm very pressed for time in the gym. I'll usually acknowledge you, give you a peace sign, and then when I'm done with the workout, I'll come over and check it on you. Yeah, um, so, mm-hmm. yeah most people are happy to help, but almost like we said the other day, if you see like seeing a celebrity out to dinner, they'll usually sign an autograph for you before and after. Usually at the gym, the more serious work crowd of people's in the middle of the set, no, they're not going to help you. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. If you're at the bottom of your squat and somebody, and you go over to them and you're like, hey, oh, yeah. can you? Never ask a question while the person's your, actively doing a your set. Your head goes out and they're like, ah! I've seen this too often. The, dude, it happened back in the day. I used to be a trainer That's at a all gym the time. all the time. I'd be in the middle of my deadlift set and somebody would come over and be like, can you take your headphones off? And I'm like, duh! And I'm drenched in sweat. Like, just wait All for the, the time. Wait for this set to be, wait for me to catch my breath and yeah. I'll fall. It's weirdly common. Um, so, gym etiquette's important. So, again, that's just you know gym what? etiquette. Gym etiquette's a good thing. That's topic what I was to about to do. Gym etiquette would be a great one. It was my idea. You get it. It's all yours. <laughs> it, was, it was a joint effort. Yeah. <laughs> gym etiquette's actually a really good topic to talk about. We'll yeah. save that for another one. I gotta write that down, though. I gotta write down gym etiquette. And flannel onesies. <laughs> yeah, and Paul, that's also a good solution. Just stand awkwardly in the peripheral vision. <laughs> Just stare at them. All depends on what uh, you are on at the moment when someone hit you <laughs> on the soggy hand. Also true. Or how that's, deep you are under your prep. <laughs> what pre-workout are you on at the moment when what someone week, hits you is on it the week, top? Is it week 16 or week one? <laughs> I don't know. You're going to look at and be like, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, but group. yeah, so that's what we had in the notes. Do you guys have any other concerns you'd like us to yeah. t- look into? Questions, comments, concerns, drop them in the comments right now. Advice that's worked for you. Um, things that you've noticed, whatever it is. This is going to be saved on our wall. Share it with other people. I know most of our followers are a- uh, tune in tomorrow or the uh, yeah. preceding days. And Josh, the just stand over them while they're benching routine always works it, it's from a tv show we watch, watch lately it's a homey sexual approach <laughs> homey homey, homey. sexual <laughs> sure is. it's like when a waitress asks if everything's okay mid chew and you're like yeah. it's like when the guys are spotting each other on the on the squats getting real close homie you got you i got you bro i got you breathe with yeah. me <laughs> yeah. oh man so yeah so drop your comments right now um, I think a great love live would be gym etiquette. Yeah, I think that's actually a really good one um, because many people don't know, and that's something that I learned through the years. Yeah, I mean, there was no- I didn't know gym etiquette yeah. when I first got in the gym. Yeah, I think there were things I, you know, just because I've been around, I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> so I was telling you, especially because you always worked in Central State, which is a different environment totally than, than different bodybuilding gyms. Totally different. But you're also very funny, and you're like, I don't want to upset people. I know. I know. I know you're good. I don't like to stir the pot or upset people. I want everybody to be happy. Get along. Yes, Paul, and that's exactly what it is. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It was from the new new season of American Horror Story. I like what Josh just said, actually, because that was the sign at Apollon Gym. The sign on the wall was, put put your fucking weights away. (laughs) My favorite sign at the gym for that, my favorite one ever, is the one where it goes, uh, gentlemen, if you're having trouble putting your weights away, just go and ask one of the front desk girls. They'll do it for you. Uh, <laughs> hey. I always love that Come one. Be a strong. Uh, no curls in the squat rack. Yes, that's another gym etiquette. Do not do squirrels in the squat uh, rack. I'm not even going to get into it. I have so many things to say. Okay, yeah, we're, I think they're going to have to say that for next week, gym etiquette. Um, but I think that's this is a fun one tonight. Yeah, and I hope that you guys may have learned a new method or, or maybe brought your our attention to something that you know everybody deals with everybody including myself um just because i'm a professional athlete or a nutritionist or whatever i am like doesn't mean that i got all my shit together too we all have our struggles i have have no pants on right now (laughs) 
Ew, that don't make people freak out. I have pants on. He has pants on. <laughs> Do I though? Pants off dance. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I, so I think that's our sign-off. Yeah, that's our sign-off. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Stay healthy, right. stay sane, stay happy, and stay safe. Stay safe. Bye, everybody. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.